Hello, bonjour et bienvenue dans cette nouvelle vidéo. Je suis Lauriane de la chaîne Marathon des Langues et aujourd'hui j'ai encore une invitée spéciale, c'est Lydia Makova. Makova, ok, oui. je veux pas faire d'un père. Ok, je suis très contente de vous euh, présenter Lydia parce que aujourd'hui on va parler de comment apprendre des langues sans partir à l'étranger. Euh, Lydia euh, has learned like nine languages without traveling, without going abroad. So it's very interesting. She will share her experience with us. Mais juste avant, je vous rappelle que vous pouvez télécharger le guide qui se trouve juste en dessous de la vidéo. C'est gratuit, c'est un kit de démarrage pour bien démarrer dans l'apprentissage des langues. Ok, so Lydia, thank you so much to be in this video with me. It's like a, a great pleasure because I speak about you all the time oh. in my different <laughs> conference and in uh, on the blog. So, um, can you tell us like? So you speak nine languages, right? Yes, so the thing is, I, I I've learned nine languages in my life. Mm -hmm. I speak seven of them kind of fluently, okay. and I'm I'm learning my ninth one, whereas I forgot my eighth one. Oh yeah, right? <laughs> that's that's always an issue when you yeah, learn new right. languages. It's like yeah, sometimes it, it, it yeah. If you don't keep in touch with the language at all, this, this was the Slovak sign language, and mm -hmm. I just don't have any deaf friends in, in Slovakia, so I did not use the language at all, so that, that's a gone language for me. Oh yeah, so yeah. Um, you're saying you need to practice not to forget, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So which languages are you learning? Are you speaking actually? Yeah, so I, I started with uh, English, German, yes. uh, then Spanish, Polish, wow. uh, Russian, French, Esperanto, uh -huh. and uh, and the Slovak sign language, and, the, and then Swahili. So wow, and your native language is Slovak, and it's Slovak. all Slovaks also speak Czech, but I don't really count this language because uh -huh. it's like it's a given you know we get it for free it's like yeah <laughs> it's a native one right even though you you spend like few years to learn it right yes when you course, yeah. you were a baby right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us how you learn all these languages did you go abroad or Not at how all. was it <laughs> that's, that's the thing i i really think we are so lucky to be living uh, today in the era of the internet because right. we don't we have all the resources to create the country as if we were living there right so if I'm, for example if i was when i was learning russian i was listening to russian podcasts when i was going to work or you know well, going somewhere doing something at home cleaning cleaning up doing the dishes whatever i could speak to people either i found friends uh, like near me or in bratislava russian speakers or i found them online so you can yeah. even talk to people right you can read whatever you want the internet mm -hmm. is full of stuff you can buy books so you really don't need to move abroad to the country like russia or ukraine to learn the language that mm -hmm. i think that we are so lucky with that so you're saying like you didn't go to school like specifically specifically to learn the language yeah. but you mean you like you recreate like the linguistic immersion exactly. at home exactly yeah It's so i i always learned these languages by myself i mean english and german were the two i had uh, at school this is like something that all slovaks have uh -huh. but all the other languages i uh, were languages that i learned by myself by using usually one book at the beginning that was kind of my guide mm -hmm. and then having a lot of this input and other resources so that i get you know i hear the language a lot and i read it a lot and i speak a lot that's, wow. that's what it takes right and um nos puede decir cuánto el porcentaje de hablar en el idioma para practicar mm. cuánto ejemplo? tiempo paso yo hablando sí de, oh, bueno um, es difícil de decir cuando comienzo uh -huh. con un idioma no hablo tanto porque me falta vocabulario sí. eh, y no, no conozco la gramática uh -huh. así que los primeros dos meses siempre paso sin hablar ah, bueno, okay. no siempre es normalmente más o menos y después ya empiezo de hablar un poco con uh -huh. gente amigos uh, profesores y trato de hablar por lo menos dos horas a la semana okay. y um, el resto de tiempo como cinco o seis horas paso haciendo otras cosas leyendo uh -huh. escuchando Interesante. Sí. Y cuando dices dos horas por semana, aproximadamente, ¿son dos horas como una hora y una hora o son sí. dividido, bueno, divididas? Sí, son, es dividido. Yo creo uh -huh. que es mucho mejor aprender cada día uh -huh. en poco, poco tiempo. Exactamente. Sí. <risa> Estoy de acuerdo. Que, que de acuerdo. A, a hacerlo una vez a la semana, no sé, seis horas o algo así. Um, así que yo normalmente paso una hora cada día uh -huh. uh, cuando me despierto, uh -huh. es, es el mejor tiempo para mí claro. para aprender <risa> y, y paso una hora haciendo algo uh -huh. y en la semana trato de tener por lo menos dos, dos horas de conversación. Wow, interesante. Sí, sí estamos de acuerdo, de acuerdo con esto de es más eh, efectivo 
eh, tiene más eficiencia, eficiencia <risa> hablar eh, o practicar un poco cada día en lugar de una hora o dos horas cada semana como lo hacemos en la escuela, ¿verdad? Sí, si, si se hace solo una, una hora o dos horas a la semana, si, si es todo el contacto, uh -huh. creo que nunca va a funcionar, no, uh -huh. es, no es bastante. Para aprender un idioma se necesita más tiempo, eso, eso es una cosa que es así, ¿no? Así sí. que la gente que solo va a cursos y, y es un curso con un grupo, y, y se habla, no sé, cinco minutos de ese, esa, esa hora, pues es nada, no, sí, claro. no va a ayudar. No funciona, porque, no. porque la memoria no funciona pas de cette mémoire, de cette manière, on a besoin d'assimiler, y la assimilación es un proceso que no se fait pas comme ça en claquant des doigts. Exactement. Ouais. Et donc, en plus, tu parles français. <rire> oui, c'est vrai. Mais en fait, alors, je, je, ne, je, ne me suis, je ne me sens pas euh, très sûre euh, sur mon français euh, parce que je ne l'ai pas utilisé pendant 5 ou 6 six, six, six ans. 6 ans, oui. Ouais. Euh, mais quand je pratique un peu avec des gens, je me débrouille. Oui, <rire> ouais. mais tu te débrouilles très bien. Ah, merci. <rire> c'est beaucoup. Parce que c'est vrai que c'est ce qu'on disait juste avant l'interview, que lorsqu'on ne pratique pas une langue, eh bien, on la perd et c'est pour ça que c'est très important euh, de, euh, de pratiquer, de toujours s'immerger dans la langue. Et d'ailleurs, j'avais une conversation hier avec euh, un des polyglottes qui se trouve ici parce que on est aujourd'hui euh, au centre du polyglottisme. Je ne sais pas si <rire> oui. je peux dire ça. On est au Polyglot Gathering qui était euh, co-organisé par toi d'ailleurs euh, l'année dernière. Et euh, une des personnes me disait « Mais euh, attention, quand tu décides d'apprendre une nouvelle langue, c'est un peu comme un fardeau parce que tu vas mettre beaucoup d'efforts euh, dans l'apprentissage et si tu décides euh, bah, de te mettre dedans, et, tu veux pas la perdre par la suite. Donc sache que ça va être du travail, des efforts, oui. du temps et de la pratique pour ne pas la perdre. Oui, je pense qu'on a besoin d'une motivation forte pour apprendre ouais. une langue. Je ne, je ne recommande pas d'apprendre seulement comme ça parce que ouais. je veux apprendre une langue. Oui. Mais si je veux voyager, euh, si je veux connaître de, des gens qui parlent la mm -hmm. langue, c'est une autre chose. Ouais, je suis assez d'accord avec ça, avec l'histoire de motivation, c'est que même quand on est fan de l'an, on est passionné, si on n'a pas une motivation forte, et il y a un moment, on lâche. Ouais. Là, je m'étais lancé le défi sur la chaîne de, de parler russe en un an, et j'avais une motivation forte parce que j'avais euh, lancé le défi sur la chaîne. Donc, j'avais une échéance, j'avais une communauté, je, je l'avais dit publiquement. Et une fois qu'on arrive à la fin du défi, Bien, j'ai arrêté, je fais une pause, je vais reprendre, mais c'est vrai que là, j'ai besoin de retrouver une motivation derrière forte pour reprendre l'apprentissage. Oui, oui, c'est comme ça. Pour oui. moi, euh, voyager est une motivation assez forte. Oui. Et si je, si j'ai besoin de, de me motiver un peu plus, euh, je, j'achète des billets, oui. des billets, 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 oui. Oui, des billets <rire> pour euh, faire un voyage dans un pays. Ouais. Euh, et comme ça, j'ai une motivation parce que je sais que je vais voyager dans euh, trois semaines, par exemple. Ouais. J'apprends wow. chaque jour très <rire> intensivement. Ok, ouais. oui, c'est la pression. Du coup, c'est ce que je vous recommande aussi quand vous démarrez, c'est de vous fixer une échéance. Ainsi, on a un peu la pression, on a peur de se retrouver ouais. dans cette situation euh, d'inconfort. Donc, du coup, euh, bah, on bosse quand on n'a plus le choix et on y va, quoi. Oui. Ok. <rire> um... More questions? Ah, Which yes. Which language? Uh, English. Yeah, English. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back to English. So, can you uh, talk to us about your project, like about your four, uh, should I say? Pillars. Pillars? Yeah, yeah right. Pillars. Um, so, yeah, and I do language mentoring, which is my way of uh, mm -hmm. not teaching people languages, but teaching them how they can learn the languages by themselves. And I got very inspired by the polyglot community, mm -hmm. like the events like this one, the polyglot mm -hmm. gathering, where I was just listening to so many people telling me how they learn languages. And mm -hmm. I was trying to compare it to the people out there, you know, learning one or two languages yeah, for 15 right. years, never uh -huh. getting anywhere. Yeah. I was like, what is different? What is what is the difference? And I found out that there are basically four things that people in here, polyglots, usually have in common. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, they always um, make language learning fun. So, fun. You, you, mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, you know, and you listen to guys and you go like, oh, I use Memorize, you know, I, I use this, I use that. Yeah. And, and it, they are excited about it, right? Exactly. So, uh, that's, number th that's uh, thing number one, have fun, whatever you do. Um, <laughs> Um, the second thing is use effective methods. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you, I mean, for example, memorize, you know, or just like space repetition for vocabulary or gold list method, my favorite method. Yeah, I heard right. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then speak to someone, like speak uh, in a way which is 
effective not just speak about anything there it's it's a bit more complicated but like effective methods then use a system in your learning yeah. so have a plan you know like every hour uh, or sorry every day for one hour in the yes. morning it's a nice plan or I will listen to this amount of podcasts I will have conversations stuff like that and then finally just spend time with the language as we said one hour a week is just mm -hmm. never going to be enough to learn a language right so if you make it a little bit more you can actually see the results yeah so four pillars to exactly. get success exactly with language learning yeah. and actually this is so true and so effective like so, um, the thing is like you don't have only one method because many times people ask like but what the method the, yeah. to learn right. but i mean there's no method there's no. there's as many methods as we have polyglots here today exactly. and we are like more than 700 right. right and you can totally improvise that's the that's the nice thing about language learning there are not like strictly a few methods that you need to pick and, and right. apply but you can create a method you know mm -hmm. like the one i mentioned in my TED talk with uh, lucas and uh, you know i don't know if you can, can if you, you give an example yeah. right sure, sure, for sure. the channel so this is a, a very popular example yeah um my friend lucas bigetti from brazil um met, wanted to learn russian so he added on Skype, he added a hundred random Russian speaking people as friends, you know, just like try to befriend them. Right. And then he opened a chat window with one of them and he just wrote uh, hi in Russian, like mm -hmm. Vivieti, right? And the person replied, uh, hi, how are you? And he copied this and put it to a chat window with another person, mm -hmm. right? And then the person replied to that question, like, I'm fine, thank you, and how are you? And he copied it back to the first person, <laughs> right? So he actually answered so smart, the question. Right? It is super smart, yeah. <laughs> and he was like in the middle with a Google Translate and he was just checking out what they were talking about and he was copying the conversation between them and that's how he learned. Yeah. So I found this an, an, an amazing ex uh, example because it's not a method that people here would know. Right. But if you tell it to anyone here, people go like, yeah, that actually would work. Why? Because it's fun. You know, exactly. it's, it's an effective method. It's it's pretty systematic because he spent hours doing it every day right. and spent enough time with it so that he learned the language. So it's just it's a great example of how to you know play around with. Yeah, it's China. true, and it's not in the book. You will never learn that out of book. Exactly. And the thing is, like I would add, like with this method, you have like the emotional uh, charge because exactly. whenever when you do that, it's like kind of funny, and you know you exchange with someone. Yeah. So uh, yeah. when you have this emotional thing you memorize more it, it, absolutely. so it's so effective so you have so, five pillars actually exactly, in this yeah, one. Need, it's actually the fun aspect if you yeah think right it. like you really <laughs> sure. need to be i mean you need to enjoy it because you chose it it's mm -hmm. not something that someone told you or imposed yeah on you, right and that i think that's a problem often teachers i mean very good teachers want to teach their students in a certain way mm -hmm. but it's not the way for the students so exactly the teacher says like no but you should do this this is the type of homework you get and it's not the, something that the students would, cho would choose by themselves so it doesn't work for them exactly and that's why you need to choose the things that will work yeah for it's true because many many students say it's like i don't like english for example like in france but they don't like it's not the fact they don't like english but it's the fact that they don't like the method how exactly. to learn exactly. because it's like you have to do it it's like you know it's imposed so yeah. they don't like it you know yeah. it's like children if you tell him to do to, to if you tell him to do something he will do all the contrary exactly, right yeah. so yeah. It, it just work like uh, like uh, children exactly no you, it, it needs to have the freedom you need to be able to choose what right. you want to do but that's the good good uh, news about learning languages that you yeah. can do that right it can be fun right yeah so and it should and it should be yeah it should be and can you just uh, to before we finish can you tell us how you you learn Spanish because I think it's a very great example yeah um, so uh, Spanish was the first language I learned by myself and right. uh, I tried it with the course way you know yeah. I attended a course and it was just not working out mm -hmm. so then I, I decided I need to um, I, I want to read something that I like so I read Harry Potter translated in Spanish right. and also listened to it at the same time as an audiobook uh -huh. right and I would do it every day for 20 minutes that's the system in it mm -hmm. right that's the systematic approach and uh, at the beginning I really did not understand much like on the first pages I really understood like Harry, Hermione, Dumbledore, you know, things like that, right. like, just the names. But then it was going better and better and better and by the end of the book wow. I was almost reading it in Spanish and mm -hmm. it was just incredible to see how that works. Yeah, and you can see like the evolution from the beginning until the end. Yeah, it's so motivating. And it's when amazing. you start over, like you, you take the, the first page, 
the first pages you see you read it again yeah. it's like oh my god it's yeah. free now right? exactly yeah and i think most people would not uh, probably do this because they do the first page and they go like oh i don't understand this this is too difficult for me yeah it I'm doesn't not on work that level yet mm. right but this is exactly the fourth pillar this is the patience the amount of time you yes. need to put into it mm -hmm. and then you see the results they don't just come right away but sure. you should not give up if it's something you enjoy something it's fun and it's effective yes. just do it regularly and it will come right and you need to trust the method all right or also because exactly. like you do it and And when you give up, it's because you think it won't work. Yeah. But when you do it and you you know it's hard, but eventually it will pay off. Exactly. And that, that's exactly why I'm trying to motivate people to do this and then tell them, trust me, this will work. You know, I've right. done this nine times. I know what I'm talking about. Just and do then, it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's amazing to see that actually it works for normal people out there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> polyglots, but just people who want to learn one language. So and true. I, I work with such people and they, and they start applying these methods. They go like, well, Lydia said I, I should do this, you know, uh, yeah. long enough to see the results. I'm gonna wait and see. And then they really see and they come to me like, oh my God, this is incredible. I, I see like, I see the improvement. Uh, you know, I, I understand so much more. I can say so much more and it's so rewarding. Yeah, of course. Like I, I have the same result like with my students. Like I, when they trust you, they just apply the, the plan and they see results, results and you can see, e their um, their highs with stores they're like yeah. oh my god i'm able to do it and yes. this is so rewarding yeah, yeah I, i feel i feel <laughs> it i know and um um what else <laughs> Maybe that's i think it. pretty good yeah <laughs> okay well uh thank you very much lydia for a being pleasure. here it's like a, a big honor to have you oh. on the channel on <laughs> marathon des langues So, euh, j'espère que vous avez apprécié cette vidéo. En tout cas, c'était un grand honneur d'avoir Lydia sur cette chaîne Merci. encore une fois. Et euh, n'hésitez pas à liker, à partager cette vidéo comme d'habitude, à laisser vos commentaires juste en dessous. Je vous mets le lien de Lydia sur vers son blog, son Instagram, euh, Language Mentoring, pour la retrouver. Et euh, encore une fois, euh, on se retrouve euh, plus tard dans la prochaine vidéo encore. Merci Merci à toi Ciao, ciao, ciao. <rire>